Been very like that. Uh, a lot of names in the prayer list this morning. Uh, as I said earlier, it uh, seems like they, that prayer list has doubled since last week. We're going to make much prayer for those people. And uh, <clears throat> there's cards in the back, are not? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cards in the back. Sign those we go out. Uh, so a lot of happy birthdays in there. We'll wish those happy birthday. And uh, some anniversaries, news and notes. Uh, thank the Lord that uh, Curtis came back and rededicated his life last Sunday and uh, was rebaptized. And then the sister's in his baptism was his dad, Joe Conley, and uh, brother, uh, Tommy Pete. And uh, we want to continue to pray for her, uh, Brother Curtis and his family. Our conference call on Wednesdays and Sunday nights at 7 o'clock. Phone number is in here to call, and then the 2380 pound uh, twice after you call and get you logged in. Uh, <clears throat> fellowship Hall is coming along pretty good. Uh, Brother Dicky and Brother Billy are uh, taking care of that project, and uh, they're not too far uh, from finishing that job. So we want to we want to thank them for all the hard work they've done. Uh, family group. Uh, there, if you got pop cans, you don't want to do with them. Just bring them. There's a container out the back here. As you go down uh, to the fellowship hall, you can throw those in, and somebody will take those off and, uh, and uh, to the recycle center. If you got crackers, you can take those down on a Sunday night. By the suit, and Jimmy does uh, for the Christ pantry. You can bring those here, or Alex or Tom. And they'll see that they get uh, taken uh, down to the uh, pantry downtown. I think that's at the Christian church. Good writings in there. Uh, take time to read those. But, uh, those Dan did the bulletin this week. It's like he's uh, got grilling on his mind. So, uh, turn to your song book. If anybody else has any announcements this morning. We'll turn to page 361. <clears throat> this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know. I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, my Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know he'll take me through the hole I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. I have a loving Savior up in glory land. I don't expect to stop until I with him stand. He's waiting now for me in heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know, I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting.
out in victory. Their song is sweet as praise, drift back from heaven's door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. It's 129. <coughs> <coughs> Wonderful Jesus, glorious friend. He will be with me until the end, cheering up all keeping me strong, fearless and loyal, shielding from wrong. Wonderful Jesus, marvelous King, ever his praise my spirit shall sing. When I behold His glorified face, how I shall praise His wonderful grace, wonderful Jesus, showing the way into the blessed kingdom of day, guiding my footsteps, holding control. Making me happy, keeping me whole. Wonderful Jesus, marvelous King. Ever is praise, my spirit shall sing. When I behold His glorified face, how I shall praise His wonderful grace. Wonderful Jesus, all through the night, He will unfold me, giving me light. Then when the morning breaks on the shore, this He will whisper, my evermore. Wonderful Jesus, marvelous King. will be our prayer song. <clears throat> Anyone has any prayer requests this morning? Yeah, Paul. Remember Cherry Johnson. He has surgery tomorrow. Have a thyroid for him. Cherry? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And remember uh, Karen Wells Bailey. She's a cousin to Kirby. She's having some heart problems, and I, I understand she's already got some illnesses going on. What was her name? Karen Wells, and she's now Bailey. So Karen Bailey or Karen Wells Bailey. Okay. Over here. Paul, keep my mail uh, in your prayers. Am yeah. I long? Yeah, and um, keep my uh, Brandon long. Brandon. 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 Also, we'll remember Irma Fanning. She fell in Uncle Rip this week. And also, uh, keep Mark Walters in prayer. He's having some problems with his hip. Okay. Irma Fanning and Mark Walters. Anyone else?
number 646. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. Now just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayerful yearning, as your heart in heaven is turning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my passing dream without a ray of cheer. And in a cloud of death may hide the light of day. The mist of sin may rise and hide the starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our pain and cry. And he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a prayerful yearning. Heart in heaven is turning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I lay in a belt and fear. My eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our pain and cry. And he will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayerful yearning, as your heart in heaven is turning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. In our Sunday school class this morning, we're talking about prayer. <clears throat> And what mind, mind frame we need to get in when we talk with the God, what we need to ask God for, how we need to ask God things. You know, Christ talked to God a lot. And uh, in chapter 11 of Luke, uh, it said, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, it says, When he ceased, when he quit praying to his father, says, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. They wanted to know how to pray to God. They wanted to know how, what to ask for. John was teaching his disciples to pray, how to pray, what they needed, and that's what we need to today. And our attitude, the frame of mind that we need to get into, what we're asking God for, are we asking it for our own in this, you know, what we, the things that pleases us, or are we asking him to help others that are in need, that are suffering, that are sick and afflicted, you know. Uh, and that's the things that we need to do is to have a sincere, heartfelt prayer when we come to him. And our attitude and the concern for, especially for those that are lost and undone without him and don't know him as their savior. So it's, and, you know, he goes on and teaches them about the Lord's Prayer. And we need to know the Lord's Prayer. We need to know to do God's will. Put him first in our lives. Put other people first instead of your own needs. That's what, that's what he's trying to get through to them. Put your other people's needs before your own. This time, we ask Brother Joe can lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, we pray in heaven, Lord, we come to you with a proud head and a thankful heart, Lord. Again, thank you for all the many blessings you've given us down through our lives, Lord, as you continue to take care of each and every one of us, Lord, of our own personal needs that we have, Lord. We thank you for all those many blessings you've given us. We also want to petition you here. Again, this morning, Lord, for those that uh, are sick and afflicted around about us, Lord, those prayer requests that was made here this morning, Lord, that uh, 
You know the needs of your people more than you know of our own selves, Lord, but we pray that you'll take care of those needs and we'll see to the things that are being done the way they ought to. And Lord, we know and have faith that you will do that for each and every one of us. We also want to pray for those, Lord, most of all that don't know who you are, Lord, that haven't uh, accepted you as their Lord and Savior. That may be something to be said around here today, Lord, that uh, someone may think about where they're at in time and eternity and they'll give their life to you before it's everlasting and too late. Pray for those, Lord, that have lost loved ones, Lord, and during all this stuff that's going on, there's been the end of the death, Lord, and we pray that uh, you'll take care of the families, Lord, that you'll comfort them as they need comfort in the time of their loss. Pray for this nation, Lord, for the leaders therein, Lord, that they don't uh, make decisions, things that uh, will help ease the burden on each and every one of us also, Lord, and make things go just a little bit smoother, Lord, but we know that in this life, we're going to have troubles and trials and tribulations, Lord, but we leave it clean up on you that you'll take care of those needs for us, Lord, and that uh, if we put our, our little hand in your big hand, that you'll, you'll pull us through anything that we come up against. Help us to change the things we can, the things we can't change, Lord, but uh, help us to accept and go on and, and be a glory for you and give you the honor and praise and glory. Thank you most of all, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life so we can have life after this life is over. Be with all the first responders, Lord, that stands in harm's way each and every day for us to have the freedom that we have. And Lord, pray that uh, as they make decisions that they'll make and uh, be helpful to each and every one that is involved in the situation that they get themselves into. Pray, Lord, for this little congregation. Pray for the brother Tom, brother and Paul, Lord, as they bring the message that will be brought away to be pleasing you. And that we all, and that you get the honor and the glory that we all get better understanding from your word. And all these many things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Joe. On the uh, first day of the week, we come together. Worship God in spirit and truth, that we should worship Him every day. But we set aside uh, a day for to partake of His the bread that represents His body that was broken on the cross of Calvary, and partake of the cup that represents His blood that was shed for the remission of sin. We can never begin to repay the debt that we owe to Jesus Christ. For suffering, dying for our sins, and uh, He went through a lot for us. We, uh, I don't think our mind can even comprehend uh, what He went through for us. Well, I want to read this morning the First Corinthians chapter eleven. Uh, you want to turn to your Bible or to your Psalm book to page three twenty one. It'll be our communion song, and. Uh, it says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, The cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of the who, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. It says, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. So at this time, we're going to have a song, 321, and I'm going to ask Brother Alex, if you don't care, to come up and help with the, uh, uh, with one of the prayers this morning, uh, on the communion, after we sing this song here. 321. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and in my sovereign die, would he devote that sacred death for such a worm as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away, it was there by faith I 
sacrifice that you made for us by sending your son Jesus Christ to die upon the cross of Calvary for our sins. We pray, Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we partake of this bread that represents your son's body that was broken for us, Lord God, the sacrifice that he made for us. We pray, Father, Lord, that we'll take of this its manner is pleasing unto thee. We ask thee, Father, Lord, if there be anything between us at this time that you'll forgive us of it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. to come to you and we just want to continue to give you thanks for the many things that you've done for us lord thank you for your service thank you for your son jesus christ we come to this world lord and live that uh, perfect and sinless life lord and was put to death lord not for his sins but for ours lord as we partake of this fruit of the vine lord that we may remember that life that he lived, lived and that blood that was shed upon that cross that lord through his death and through his blood shedding, that we may have that eternal life with you in heaven. Lord, just thank you so very much for everything that you continue to do for us. And all these things in Christ's name. And amen. Also, we have another commandment is to lay by in store, but uh, you can leave your offering at the, at the plate as you go out. Yeah, we're, not, we're not passing the plate around. So, but I'll read uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 
we're supposed to give back to the Lord that he's blessed us with to help those that are in need, those people that are having a hard time to help with payment and for, for utility bills and all these things at the church, to those that are in need. And uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, it says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. So you can leave your offering as, as you go out, and then there's a, the offering plates are in the back back there. <clears throat> I don't want to take up brother, too much of Brother Tom's time, but you can turn your, your song book to close an invitation song will be number 647. Read a little bit here in Second Peter, the first chapter. <clears throat> Starting with verse 1, it says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of Jesus, uh, the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord and, our, and Jesus our Lord. I'm going to read it. He's brought peace to us, those that have Christ in our hearts. We should have the knowledge of God. It says, According to his divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. What is virtue? Virtue is morals. That's a lot of things that the world does not have. If you look around today, there is no morals. The values, the things that we grew up with, they're gone. They've been replaced by evilness in the hearts of men and women. Since whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that ye that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We've escaped these things if we have given our life to the Lord. And there's a great promise that He has made to us. Christ made a promise to us. If we are dear to the end, if we serve him faithfully, there's a home in heaven waiting for those that love and serve him. Those that have walked the road with Christ. Those that have endured the temptations, the trials, the torment in this life. You have to win, run the race. You have to finish that course to get the prize. And the prize is, is eternal life. With Jesus Christ. It says, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity, love. We have to have these things in our life. When we become a Christian, God instills these things in our life through his Holy Spirit. It says, For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall ne neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But, that he, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off you say that you are Christians and you don't see these things, you're blind. You can't see what's going on in the world. And has forgotten that he purged you from his old sins. You've forgotten that Jesus Christ came into your life, that he purged you, he cleansed you from a life of sin. If you can't see these things that he's speaking about. It says, wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you if you do these things, ye shall never fall. For so 
and entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly unto the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It says, Wherefore I will not be diligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, till ye know them and be established in the present truth. We should know these things, as Peter says. You should know these things. Yea, I think it neat, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir up your to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Peter said it's not going to be very long until I give this life up. Jesus showed him that he would have to die. He told him how he would die. Peter knew that he had a very short time left. You and I have a short time left. We need... To show people and tell people that they need to get ready. That they need to put off this old man of sin. And put on Christ. Amen. And Peter said in verse 15, he said, Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not for we have not followed cunning device fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were were eyewitnesses of his majesty. It says, For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. It says, And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in, holy, in the holy mount. We have also a more sure world, word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day a star rises in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture of is any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. We need to put God first in our life. We need to put these emblems that Peter talked about in our life to show love one for another, to be steadfast, unmovable, always moving forward. The battle is in front of us, not behind us. As Brother Tom writes the message. Well, it's good to see everyone here today, and I want to acknowledge that those that are listening in uh, we are getting a large audience on our phone conference, and uh, several people called in last Sunday, and they're listening to us live, and uh, so I had spoken with some of the congregation yesterday, and they had a desire, so I'm, I'm anxious uh, to see how many people called in. Uh, some people doesn't have access to the internet, and some of these things, and so they were going to call in, and, and they're listening to us live through the phone conference. So uh, to each of the people that are doing that, we welcome you here. Uh, we welcome those that uh, watch us on the Internet, and we also welcome those that uh, watch us on Messenger. Today I want to talk to you. Uh, Paul said that he was talking out of 1 Peter, and I thought, wow, that's where I'm going. Uh, but he was in 2 Peter 1. So I am going to 1 Peter, or I'm actually going to 2 Peter, 1 Peter, the second chapter. Let me spit that out the right way. But I want to go back and start um, in the 22nd verse of the first chapter. And, uh, you know, it, it's always amazing to me that how uh, the Lord sets things up and, and Paul, when he brings up the services, hours that we haven't talked, that our things always mesh. And, uh, I think that both of us are trying to do the Lord's will, and, and the Lord has a plan, and, 
and he knows what each person listening and here sitting today needs to hear. Uh, he knows what's going on in your lives. He's all knowing. And uh, so hopefully this message will spill over and answer questions you have or uh, problems you may be dealing with in your life maybe help you to uh, correct those and, and live closer to God. So starting in the 22nd verse, and I'll explain to you why I'm doing this, uh, of the first chapter it says, See, you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto an unfeigned love of the brethren. Unfeigned means sincere or real. Uh, so it's saying here that we have real love or sincere love for the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, not of a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of men as the flower of the grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached to you. Now the reason I went back to those couple of verses and read was because of this next little word here, wherefore. So that's kind of talking about when it says wherefore, it's going back and referring to something that we've already talked about. And this morning I noticed in, in Brother Paul's reading uh, in Second Peter that that word was used several times. So evidently it was a word that was translated that, that Peter used often, often. And that means as a result of which. So when we start off wherefore, we've got to go back and see what it is he's talking about. And what he's talking about here are these things that we need to purify our soul, we need to love the brethren, and we need to be born again. Those are the things that was mentioned. So wherefore, if we have met those conditions in those preceding verses, he says, laying aside all malice, all guile and hypocrisies and envies, and all evil speaking. So if you're here today and you're a born-again Christian, and you love your brethren fervently, and you've received the word and you've obeyed the truth, you need to lay those things aside. And you may say, well, I don't know that I'm doing that. Well, that's why we need to get in the Bible and read and understand what these things are. These are the commands of what we are to be doing and what we're not to be doing. So when we talk about malice, if we're going to lay that aside, what is malice? Well, man, malice is a cancer that grows in your heart, and it can overtake you, and it's to want to think evil toward others. If you think, boy, I wish that person would break their leg, or boy, I wish that person would have a car wreck, or I wish this or that, those aren't good things. That's malice. And if we're a born-again Christian, we should not be having malice to our brother who that we're supposed to be loving, sincerely, fervently. Okay? In James 1 and 21, it says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and all superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save our souls. So that's what we're doing today. We're in the Word. We're studying it. We're trying to learn what it is we're supposed to do. Now, the word there, superfluity, I have to look up a lot of words when I study. That means excessive. And it says the, so in a sense, it's saying the excessive amount of naughtiness in ourselves, we need to get rid of that. We need to depart from that. And it says that we need to receive the engrafted Word. Well, I thought, what does engrafted mean? And so I looked that up, and it means to be implanted. And so as we are baptized, and that's what it was talking in verse 22 previously, being born again, when we're baptized, we receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, and, and just as, let me go back here to reiterate that. Paul read that, the last verse that he read in, in uh, 2 Peter 1 for the prophecy came not in no time but a little of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Okay? So that is the only time that word is used in the King James Version in the Bible, that we are in to be engrafted into that word, to the word, okay? 
Guile is a deceit in words, falsehood, or a delusion. And Brother Dan spoke of uh, speaking idle words the other day in our Wednesday night uh, session on our phone conference. And, and we had a lengthy discussion about what idle words are. And that we're not to be doing that. And the Bible tells us that well, we will be judged of our idle words. So as a side note here for you to think about, and we talked about prayer this morning in our Sunday school class, we need to ask God in our prayer to forgive us of our idle words. We don't want that to be a snag on the day of judgment. You go, oh, I forgot to do that. Because we're going to be judged by that. And we know that if we ask for forgiveness of things, God will cleanse us for that. So for that reason, I bring that up. The next thing he says that we need to get rid of is hypocrisies. That is a common counterfeit piety, piety or a counterfeit relationship. All the fake stuff that people do in their life and then they're pretentious about things and pretending to be this or pretending to be that. God sees this. Now, we may fool people down here, but he's saying as Christians, we need to get rid of that. We need not to live in that. Envies, jealousies of something. And we talked about that again a little bit in Sunday school. My Sunday school class kind of went back and forth with, with my message. But jealousy of something. Maybe you're jealous of somebody's ability because they can do something better than you can. Or maybe they prosper more than you. And you're, you're envious that you haven't prospered that much. Don't take into account maybe they've worked harder than you have. It's just that they have more than you, and you, you envy that, okay? Maybe somebody's famous, and you wish you were famous. Maybe somebody's been successful in the work that they do, and you think, well, I wish I was that way. If we need to get these envies out, we need, we're going back to these scriptures that were fervently unfeigned love for our brethren and their sister. We need to be happy that somebody else is having these things and not be jealous because we don't have those things. And evil speaking. I wonder sometimes if we realize in the day how many times we speak evil and don't even realize it. Maybe we're talking about something. Maybe we're conveying gossip that we've heard from somebody else and it's not constructive criticism. It's just talking about how bad they are and what they've done. Would we want people to evil speak about us if they loved us sincerely, as the Bible says? So it's backbiting or talking down uh, of others, speaking negative toward uh, about other people. We, all of these things listed here are sins, and we are not to commit sin. And how do any of these things benefit us. They don't. They benefit Satan, who tries to keep us tore up in our mind all the time, trying to keep us backbiting amongst ourselves and not presenting that fervent love that we talked about. If we are somebody's Bible, we might be the wrong version, and we need to be aware of that, because we might be the only Bible that somebody sees, and they think, I don't want a part of that if that's what being a Christian is. And so we're leading somebody down a wrong path. If you're not getting blessings in your life, maybe it's because of these sins, of these things that Peter has mentioned here, is we're more tore up about those things than we are helping others, and that's why we're not seeing blessings, okay? Your heart might not be in the right frame of mind to understand that God is blessing you, but you're always wanting something somebody else has and not content. Apostle Paul said wherever he was, he was content, and he found to be that way. So we need to lay those things aside, and we need to know what those things are in our life so that we know not to do them again. In verse 2, it says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. As you understand there, it says that you're going to grow by the word. There are people today that are not reading the Bible. And they wonder why they don't have the spirit that maybe somebody else has. Maybe they're wondering why they don't know what it is they're supposed to be doing or not supposed to be doing because they haven't gotten into the word. There's too many things in this world today to occupy us and to amuse us without having to pick up that Bible. 
Those people are slowly dying and they don't even realize it. They're withering away just as a child would wither away without milk. They are doing that in their spiritual life and they don't understand. They can't understand why they're not happy anymore about being a Christian. They can't understand why if they attend a service, they're not getting a blessing because they haven't been into the Word. And so I ask you today, do you feel like you're dying? Do you feel like your spirit isn't as strong as maybe it once was? Have you been neglecting reading the Bible? Think of the things that we do every day. I'm a creature of habit. First things I do every day. But in your everyday routine is picking up that Bible and reading it either early in the morning or late in the afternoon or midday. Some point in time that you take out and you get in the Word and you get into the Spirit with God and to learn things. And so I ask you, as a young child would go for a Bible, are you that anxious to pick up your Bible and read it? Or does it not affect you that way? Are you not anxious for reading and knowing and knowing what you are going to be held accountable for, what you're responsible for? And as Paul mentioned, some of the things that we're supposed to do in this life as a Christian. So I ask you, which do you pick up more, the remote or the Bible? <coughs> The cell phone or the Bible? You have to answer these questions yourself. Whatever it is, is there something more important in your life than the Bible is to you? And so just as a babe needs milk, we need the Word. Because without it, you're not going to grow spiritually. Don't fool yourself. You're not going to grow spiritually. And you won't be ready when Satan comes knocking at your door. So don't let Satan fool you and think, I don't need to be in the Bible because Satan knows that word. He knows it frontwards and backwards. He used it against Jesus Christ himself when he tempted him. Don't think Satan doesn't know the word. And you won't be ready when Christ comes back. And you won't be ready on the day of judgment. In verse 3 it says, If so be, you ta that, if so be ye have tasted, that the Lord is gracious. So we go back again to verse 22. If we're born again, if we've been blessed with the Holy Spirit, we have tasted the graciousness of God. And I can still remember the period of time when I was baptized, and I guess my face probably shined like Moses did when he came off the mountain, because listen, I was full of spirit. I was tickled to death. God had blessed me, and I wanted everybody in the world to know that I was a Christian. And how good it felt. And they're like, what's wrong with that person? And how many people I've seen since then that get their face shining and they get this big smile on their face for so long because God has been gracious to them. He forgave them of all the sins that they had. And so if you've tasted of this grace, it's your duty and obligation to set aside these sins that are mentioned here. That's what Peter's telling us. You should desire the Word, and you will grow in the Word, and God communicates to us through the Word. If you think, well, God never talks to me, do you talk to Him? Do you listen to Him through the Word? Maybe that's why you're not having a communication. You've got a problem there. And I'm going to tell you that those that feed on the Word are going to experience more grace because they're going to understand how good God is to them through the Word. There's people that look around, I'm just waiting for God to bless me. I'm just waiting for something to happen to come down and hit me on top of the head. When God is blessing them already, but they just don't understand it because they're not in the Word seeing what the blessings are. You see, the blessings aren't going to come down as dollar bills and cars and vehicles and new houses and boats and golf carts and whatever. They're going to come down to you from God through His Spirit as love to you and knowledge and uh, Ability to be able to love other people. That's the blessings. Because all these other things that I mentioned aren't going to go to heaven with you, but the love of God will be the one thing that will go with you in the next life. Okay? In James 1 and 12, let me read here quickly. It said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. You see, we have to endure what this world offers us 
to obtain that crown. There's going to be things that's going to happen to us, even though he's been gracious to us, that we may, when he comes back, he says, welcome in, well done, my good and faithful servant. In verse 4 it says, To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Jesus Christ is precious. He was rejected when he came to this low ground. And that was part of the plan because things couldn't have happened if he wasn't. He wouldn't have been crucified if everybody said, oh, this is the Messiah. But even after, people still rejected him. And today, people are still rejecting him. Christ isn't something I need in this life. I'm getting along well without him. They don't even know. They don't know. In verse 5 there, it says, Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. Each of us here today as Christians <clears throat> are a block in a tabernacle that is the church. A holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our mediator. We go through him. So how do you offer up sacrifices if you're full of malice, guile, hypocrisies, envy, and evil speaking? Is that the kind of sacrifices that he wants? No, it is not. It is our obligation to offer up acceptable obligate or sacrifices. And you say, well, what's acceptable? We need to get in the book and study. We need to know what it is that is acceptable. If, if you have no fruit, your salvation is in jeopardy. If you have no fruit, and if you can sit here today and sit and think, well, I don't know what my fruit is. I don't think I have any fruit. You're not practicing growing fruit. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 19, every tree that bringeth not, fruit, not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Every tree that doesn't bring forth good fruit is going to be cut down and put in a fire. And Jesus is telling us that we are the trees. If we're not producing good fruit, we are going to be cut down, and we're not going to light the fire. But we know this today that we can change and we can lay aside these things. In verse 6, it goes on and it says, Wherefore, here is that word again. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect and precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Here's another one of those words I have to look up. What does it mean to be confounded? And we came across this in our Sunday school today. If we're engrafted in God's word, and we're doing what he says, we will not be confounded, because confounded means to shame down or to make you blush. If you can ever think about when you were in school and a teacher just gets on to you, you didn't do your homework, you knew you had plenty of time to do your homework, you're just not done, and on and on and on, and maybe you're there in front of the rest of the class and your face is as red as it can be because that teacher is correct. You did have plenty of time to do your homework, you just didn't do it. Or maybe a boss gets on to you at work and says, you know, you were expected, you were given ample time. The, the rest of the team depended on you to complete this task, and you didn't do it. And now the whole team's going to suffer. So I want you today to imagine if today you're standing in the judgment seat, and you're answering to a just judge, a judge that knows everything about you. He knows your works. He knows your thoughts. He knows the intentions that you had. He knows the secret things that nobody else knows about you. And you're sitting having a conversation. In Luke 8, 17, it says, For nothing is secret that shall be manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. 
You see, on that day of judgment, all these secret things that you think you're getting away with, that you haven't asked God to forgive you of, God's going to bring them up. And, and you know, I, I sit and, and, and imagine my own self sitting in that seat sometimes and thinking, can I say, but, 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 but. And God's going to say, no, this is the way it is. I know. You're, you're not going to lie to me. I know what you thought. I've recorded it. I know what you did. I've recorded it. Do you think you'll be sitting there blushing? Do you think you'll be sitting there shamed down? Are you confounded? But we can avoid this by putting aside these things that we're talking about in verse 1. And, and I want to make you consciously think of that today, that if I'm doing this, I need to change. I need to turn around and quit doing these things because they're sinful and they're things that's going to hang me up on that day of judgment. There are things that I, that I simply just say, God, forgive me. And, and, you know, God's so great and so merciful. He'll do that. He'll forgive us of those things. In verse 7 it says, Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Jesus Christ we're, we're all these little blocks, but Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. He is the foundation. He is what supports us in our life here. And it doesn't matter if you believe that. It doesn't matter if you don't believe that. And it doesn't matter if you believe something contrary to what the Bible said. This is the way it is. God said it. He's precious to God, and this is the way it's going to be. You know, you may believe something else and be in a fantasy world, but I'm going to tell you, you're going to wake up real soon on that day of judgment. There won't be any more fantasy. Those that say they believe, and, and, and I talk to people, you know, I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to get good enough to be a Christian. I'm going to someday join your off church. I'm going, you all are going to baptize me. I've got picked out who's going to baptize me. What are they waiting on? They're being fooled by Satan. They're being devoured by him. That's what he is good at. Because today is the day of salvation. In 2 Peter 3 and 9, it said, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You see, God's waiting in those people's lives for them to wise up and to listen to the Holy Spirit that's knocking on their door and obey. Just as those here today that are born-again Christians have obeyed, we have to all come through the same way, and that is coming through Jesus Christ. But you know, those people that say, yeah, someday I'm going to do this, someday. The Bible tells us in Genesis 6 and 3, that my spirit shall not always strive with men. There's going to be a period in your life. Now, God's long-suffering, and he's willing that nobody will perish. But there'll come a point where he says, I'm going to cut you off. My Holy Spirit's not going to talk to you anymore. I've suffered long enough for you. I've tried, I've begged, I've pleaded. You didn't come, you didn't change. And Satan has come. Verse 8 there, it says, And the stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. If you don't listen, if you don't obey, you're going to fall. You're going to stumble. Because the word is what keeps us from doing that. And if you're not in the word, you're stumbling if you don't even know it. I've had people tell me, I can't read the Bible. I don't understand the Bible. Now, I can read Facebook. I got to read that. Do you see something wrong with that? That the things of the world that we can buy into and that we can understand, but we won't put an effort in getting into the Word that's going to save our life, but we're looking at some phone or some tablet or some computer all day, reading and figuring what's going on in everybody's life because that's what interests us. And then on the day of judgment, we won't know what to do. We won't know what to tell him because we haven't obeyed him. 
We haven't got in the Word and said, you know, God, I remember Peter saying something about that. Listen, I'm not throwing off on Facebook. I, I, in, in no way am I bashing it. In no way am I saying that you're going to go to hell from reading Facebook. There are a lot of good things on Facebook. But what's in the Bible is the truth all the time. What's on Facebook, I'm not going to guess what is true. And what I'm trying to say is that we can search out other avenues. We can watch TV. We can do, and there's good TV shows. There's good religious. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying God says, I want you to get in the Word, and I want you to know what it says. I want to bless you through that Word. And so when something happens in your life, you go, oh, yeah, that's that blessing he told me about. Because you're in the Word and you've read about it. Verse 9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. We are all priests here today, if we're born again Christians. And holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. <coughs> Excuse me. Brother Paul talked about that. We need to be praising God and we need to let other people see us praise God. And so... We can feel good when we're sincerely trying to do what it is. We may not think we're the best Christian in the world, but the thing about it is if you're showing praises of the light and when you are humble and you're going about and doing your thing, God recognizes it and other people see that, wow, they're, they're a humble person. And by just being humble, I can tell the presence of God is in them. Because they have that fervent love for their fellow man, for their brothers, and for their sisters. And it shines through. And we, we may think, well, I don't do anything special. But you are because you're simply humble. And that's what Christ came here. Christ was humbled down. He took things. He didn't revile back against those things. And gosh, to have been able to walk with him and see how he handles situations. And to look today how we ourselves may handle the same situation. You see, we have a direct relationship with God through that Holy Spirit. We don't have to go through a priest as they did in the Old Testament. We're linked up through Jesus Christ. Can we realize what a blessing that is? That all the formalities that you used to have to go through to have your sins forgiven, and all you've got to do is say, God, I messed up. To go back and to read what all David, how he cried to God to forgive him for the things that he did wrong. Those are examples for us to look at. And we just simply through Jesus Christ say, I messed up. I, I, I need to be forgiven, God. And Shazam, you're forgiven. He says, if you'll simply ask, I'll take care of it. How simple is that? It's almost hard for us to comprehend because in this world, you've got to go through processes and you've got to do things. But in this life of spirituality, you just have to humble yourself down and admit that you did something wrong. And Jesus Christ, through the Father, will get us forgiveness. He says, your garments will be white again, though they were crimson. It is that simple. We are peculiar because we follow the things that are in the Bible, and that goes against what the world does and says today. In verse 10, it said, Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have attained mercy. Because Jesus Christ went to that cross, suffered and died, all of us have the opportunity to obtain mercy. And that's what gets us through this today. And there are people that laugh and mock at that. And I don't think on that day of judgment they're going to be laughing and mocking. I want to finish here with the 11th verse. It says, <clears throat> Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. These things that he has mentioned in verse 1, we need to abstain from those. We need to get those out of our life. We'll be cleansed to have those out of our life. This isn't just our home. Heaven's our home. And we sang in that song today, we're just a passing through. And this is a short duration compared to the eternity that we're going to spend with Christ and with God and the Holy Spirit in heaven. 
Don't let the lust of this world deter you on your trip to heaven. Get rid of these things. Peter here is pleading for us to watch out for the lustful pleasures of this life. He, he's saying, I beseech you, brother. And so we need to take and listen because there's a war going on. I want to read you a couple of scriptures. Uh, James 4, 1 says, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? See, Satan knows how to mess with your mind. He makes you lust for things in your mind that you normally wouldn't crave. But in so doing so, he keeps you all tore up to where you don't love your brother, to where you have uh, issues between you and your brother, and you don't even realize that you're envying, that you have hypocrisies, that you have all these guile and malice going on in your life. I want to read this one last scripture to you in Galatians 5. And 17, for the flesh lusteth after the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so you cannot do the things that you will. We can't live in the flesh. We have to live in the spirit. And we have to allow the spirit to guide us and not let the things of the flesh and of the world dictate or rule over us. We need to put these things aside. I encourage you to go back, read all of Peter, even Second Peter, because they, they, they all support each other in the two books. And honestly, evaluate your life and say, am I doing what I'm told to do in the Bible? Because this time is short here on this world. I think for all of us, even if we live to be 100 years old, it's going to be a short thing. And we need to, as Jesus said, I think about when his parents came back and found him after I think it was three days. He said, wish you not that I must be about my father's business. In a sense, he kind of disobeyed his parents, but he was doing what his father wanted him. We need to forget the world and do what it is the Father would have us to do. If you're here today and you're a Christian and you're struggling, if you want to come forward and ask for prayer at the end of this, we welcome that. If you're not a Christian, if you're not a born-again Christian and you want to be baptized for the remission of sins, we ask you to come forward and we will do that. If you fell away a little bit and you need prayer, we ask you to come. As we all stand and we'll sing 647.
<coughs> Tonight at 7 o'clock, we'll have our phone uh, conference. We are going into Blessed Are the pers Persecuted tonight. So at 7 o'clock, if you want to call and be a part of that, uh, we've been having large numbers. We appreciate everybody. And, I, and it may, there's a lot of people who make comments, and that helps the class go a lot better. We had our first Sunday school here this morning. I think we got through a couple of questions. There was a lot of discussion, and I didn't count. The, can somebody tell me how many was here? Twelve. Twelve people here, but we had a very good uh, discussion on, on these questions, a lot of good comments, and uh, and that's what fellowship is. Okay? No one else. Um, Doc, can I ask you to come up here and close us out so that uh, the people at home can still hear Pray. Father, we thank you for the service of these men and women here at Lacey Creek. They, they're dedicated. They're, they, they've got the spirit and they, they work hard and we're very, very much grateful for that. We thank you for this lesson we received from Brother Tom and we're thankful for Brother Tom. Father, go with us through the coming week. God, guard and protect us all. In Lord's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.